Okay, hello everybody. A uh, very warm welcome to all of you who have decided to join this uh, very nice uh, teach bit that we are going to have uh, today. My name is uh, Nair Carrera. I'm a education manager of uh, EU Code Week at European Schoolnet, where I work with my colleagues uh, Tomaso and Constantinos. And uh, this uh, teach bit is part of a, the EU Code Week icebreaker course that we are running on European Schoolnet Academy. If you're not there, I hope you will be soon. I will share the link in the chat so that you can uh, join. If you have not uh, completed the course yet, there is a very nice certificate waiting for you. So we really encourage you to join and complete the course before 15th of June. So today we're going to have a session as part of the course, as I was saying, where uh, many, uh, 10 people, 10 different speakers that I will show you now, will uh, will give you presentations and will share with you some best practices, ideas, and resources uh, in order to give you some inspiration to participate in Code Week 2020. So the idea is that you will hear the presentations and then maybe, why not, uh, get some inspiration and participate in Code Week 2020. So we have uh, Moreno uh, from Italy, Leticia from from Spain, Iman from Tunisia, Helka from Belgium, Fatma Tunisia again, Jana from Ukraine, Julio Vigas in Portugal, uh, Satu in Turkey, Francisco in Spain, and Stefania in Italy. So they are all very uh, great uh, speakers uh, with great presentations. I will give them the floor uh, immediately. Uh, just a quick reminder that each, each speaker will only speak for five minutes, okay? And let's try to keep up the, the time and not speak uh, more than five minutes so we get some, um, some time at the end for questions. So the session is being recorded and it will be also share in the in the course uh, afterwards so uh, we'll start with Moreno Moreno if uh, you're ready you can uh, switch on your camera switch on your uh, microphone and whenever you're ready the floor is yours thank you and I okay I am uh, Moreno Concetti from Italy and my presentation is about a mathematical model for COVID-19 epidemic analyzed by using ICT uh, I teach for students from 15 to 19 years old. I teach mathematics and physics. And the, the most important topics about my presentation is that uh, by using data science, uh, artificial intelligence, and mathematical models, so we can reduce to the basis of the programming language. And then we can apply this to the STEM computational thinking. So uh, this is the model that I use to reproduce the behavior of the COVID-19. In this way, by using Using this function, we can uh, compute the number of people that are affected by COVID-19 after a certain time. The students, uh, we have to study this behavior, so this function, and they can make uh, a graphic which reproduces uh, this function. They can use, for instance, uh, Desmos. Desmos is an online tool to make graphics. So they, were also, they have also to consider the amount of the population. In this case, we used 10,000 10, uh, people of the population. So the, the, the next part, um, students have to reflect and compute about the topics. So now they have to reflect about the behaviors of the function on the graphics that they have produced before. In this, in this way, they can compute by using a spreadsheet, for instance, the number of infected person. So they will make uh, this, this uh, they will compute these numbers by considering the time in months and they will compute for each month the amount of people that are affected by the COVID-19. And they have to see that uh, after a certain time, all the population will be affected by the virus, by the virus if we don't consider some strategy to stop it. So now they have make they have made this uh, they made this, uh, this, uh, this this computation and now they have to go on by still to, uh, by consider the variability of the epidemic. So they can consider the velocity of the infection. Now they will use uh, so many so many things about uh, the computational thinking and the idea to the code. So they will, they will compute the difference uh, of about the number of the infected by considering a certain time interval, for, for instance, 10 months. Uh, 
So they will use a recursive function, which is very usual for in the coding. And so they, they will, we have to see that the velocity of the, for the COVID-19 is very quick at the beginning and so goes to zero. The reason is that in a certain moment, all the population will be affected by the virus. So now they have to try. They have to try by themselves to modify the dynamics. So the, the, they have to consider a code, a certain, a certain kind of code to put a stop criteria for the epidemic. So they can consider different approach. They have to reflect about this kind of approach and to make some trials. They can consider some factor to decay uh, the epidemic. For instance, they can consider a constant decay factor or an exponential decay factor or a linear factor. We can see in the first graphic, so in the first case, that by consider a, a constant decay factor, there is a real decay of the virus. And so about the number of the people affected by the, by, by the virus. If they consider an exponential um, factor, we have no difference. Uh, if compared with the previous dynamics, but if we consider a linear factor, we have that the amount of people affected by the pe by, by the COVID-19 virus explode, so it becomes a pandemic. Uh, now we have the final part. This is another impart, important part about the computation, the computation, and so the up coding approach. They have to make uh, they have to make an analysis of real data. They will have to compare the results with the behavior of the real data. They have to find real data online. For instance, they can consider data coming from their country. And so they have to compare the result with uh, the real result with the, um, the theory that they have considered. They have to consider different approach about the dumping strategies and the validity of them. So about the velocity of the infection. They, they can make many, many computation, for instance, by scaling the amount of the computation, also the duration of the dynamics. These are all things that can be used when a, people, uh, a person, for instance, use a code, then make a program. Uh, now they have also to consider new variables, and this is what we can do when uh, we consider a problem. Uh, they can consider new, var new variables, for instance, the dead, the immune, the held, uh, the immigrants, but also the uh, emigrants. And uh, in this way, we can consider all the interaction inside the population. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Moreno. It's been a really great presentation. Uh, stick to the time, so perfect. So usually we have um, we will have some minutes at the end uh, at the end for questions. But now Moreno will have to leave. So uh, if you have any question for Moreno, please uh, type it in the chat so we can uh, ask uh, the question now. Uh, and again, it's a very nice uh, presentation. It combines uh, different things. So we've got uh, data from uh, data science, mathematics, and also artificial intelligence. Moreno, which which subjects do you think that, uh, for instance, a teacher could apply this this kind of activity? What do you think? Sorry, Nair. So if you, uh, just for the other teachers who are listening to us, uh, which teachers, which kind of teachers, so from which subjects do you think they can use or they can apply this kind of activity. They they could do this activity. So if you're a teacher of, uh, of for Mathemat instance, yes, mathematics, mathematics and physics, that's that's right. Okay. So this okay. is at the moment this is one of the most used in the topics by our by by us by the teacher during the lesson to consider the reality of the mathematics to the real world. Indeed, indeed, and this is was something that I was going to mention as well that the fact of. Uh, relating the activity to something that is happening in real life. It's something that makes really uh, kids being, being engaged, of course. Okay, uh, I don't know if there is any question for uh, Moreno. Otherwise, uh, we will share the presentation also with you in case you want to, to double check. And Stefania says it can be linked to science as well, of course, uh, Stefania. And Moreno, if you want to stay, feel free to stay. And if you want to leave, feel free to leave. 
And we're going to move on uh, now to the next uh, presenter, who is uh, Leticia Gil. Leticia is in a very beautiful uh, city in Spain, Toledo. Uh, Leticia, whenever you want, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks a lot, Nair and Moreno, for your beautiful experience. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, uh, I'm delighted to be here and have the opportunity to present or to show you my experience coding in my class. I'm Leticia Gil, I come from Toledo, as Nair said. Uh, my students are five, six years old nowadays. Uh, the experience I'm going to show to you uh, is in clarity in the three global areas our stage has, that are self-knowledge and personal autonomy, knowledge of the environment, and languages, communication, and representation. Well, why coding at the beginning? Uh, we started going when my children were three, four years old, and they came to the school for the first time. They are digital natives, and uh, as teachers, we need to make the most of this situation. As we have learned in the MOOC in the course, a lot of benefits uh, can be obtained for our children. I have chosen some of them that I'm going to follow uh, to, to show to you now. Firstly, they can learn new ways of thinking by breaking up big problems into smaller steps. It's essential if we want to individualize teaching and even if we have children with, with special uh, education needs in class. Secondly, they can learn how to take the fear out of making mistakes and find different ways to solve problems. And last but not least, when they are coding, they are always playing, which is the main way to learn, at least in our stage, in the kindergarten period. What about the curriculum? Well, the development of the computational thinking from early age is one of the latest trends in the educational landscape, which is why different countries have begun to modify their curriculum. What's my experience? Well, by the moment, each teacher, me, uh, needs to include some activities in the curriculum at the beginning of the uh, academic year. And something that is really important is working in groups because children can develop their social and language skills. And what kind of activities I normally do with my students? Well, I'm going to show to you mainly two kinds of activities. Firstly, unplug activities, and later I will talk with you, or I will show you uh, B-Bot and DOT and other activities. We will see you, we will show you in, in some minutes. Firstly, we will start with unplug activities. Uh, these activities uh, can be done without the necessity of using internet. For instance, uh, as you can see in the picture on the, on the bottom on the left, on your left, um, Children are working all together and they become robots. So we work all together at the beginning and later we work in groups and they need to give easy instructions to the others in order to move all over the space. As you can see on the right, uh, there's another unplug activity I normally do with my students that is Cody and Robbie, a card game that easily and without using electronic devices gives us the opportunity to start coding from a very young age. Rob is a robot, and Cody is a code that provides instructions to the robot, simple instructions such as turn right, turn left, go straight on. And this game is very attractive for children, not only for the color and the design, but also because children can, um, can make or can do different activities such as the viewer, the race, the snake, and even, or in addition, we can invent of our own game, so it's really interesting for them. And we do some activities related with B-Bot and DOT. Uh, these uh, are two similar robots which move themselves uh, if children give them some instructions with the buttons that they have in, in, the, in the device. Um, what's the best for this? concentration, because children are really concentrated when they do this activity, and motivation. But for me, the best is that you can create your own map. What's that? Well, uh, or how do, or how I do that? Well, I buy a transparent, or I bought a transparent kitchen table cloth, and um, I divide it into uh, 15 by 15 centimeter, and I put different uh, mats 
behind them in order to um, walk and to speak about different contexts with children. So they guide the movements of the b-bots and it is the best for teachers because you can learn in a global way. For instance, uh, we are involved in different European uh, projects due to or through e-twinning and as you can see in the bottom uh, picture, uh, they can move uh, b-bots all over the Europe map in order to see where all the countries are located. Um, even if you are starting to uh, do activities, to phonic activities in order to start before uh, learning teaching, uh, you can um, global uh, work in a global way. So it's really interesting for, for our children. And what about the future? Well, uh, of course, my intention is keeping learning, uh, trying to encourage my co-workers. And during this lockdown, I bought different pieces in order to create another robot that is named Scornabot, is more or less the same as Bebot. And I would like to introduce or to do it or to use it uh, when I will go back to school in September, I hope. Um, uh, finally, I would like to say that uh, what is more family support is vital in order to continue motivating our students. So. Um, I encourage you to participate, to start uh, doing different easy activities with your children and to participate in the Coding Week um, in uh, 2020 if you have not done it before. So thank you for, for this time. I mean, you have some questions. I, it, will be, it will be a pleasure for me to, to answer you. Thank you so much, uh, Letitia. Very nice. A lot of nice comments in the chat. Uh, you mentioned that, uh, of course, B -bots, uh, blue bots and dots are very nice for, for kids because they help them to develop social skills, communication, and, and many other skills. You also mentioned special education needs. I'm going to share also in the chat uh, the last learning bit that we did uh, with some uh, lesson plans um, for visually impaired students that Again, a reminder, you can, you teachers can download and then use to participate in Code Week. There is one question, uh, Leticia, but we will, I will gather them uh, and then we will come back to you at the very end, okay? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Leticia. And uh, I give the floor now to Iman, if you're ready. Yes. Okay. 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 So whenever you want, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Iman. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Iman Taktak Marzouk. I am from Tunisia. Uh, my activity is about genetic uh, through robotics. So I am uh, a teacher from Pioneer Middle School of Sfax, Tunisia. Uh, my students are from uh, age from 13 to 15 years old. And uh, the subject that I uh, touch is computer science and ICT. Uh, and I am a training ambassador and mentor and code week ambassador. So, uh, Neticat through robotics is an activity presented in uh, the 2020 STEM discovery campaign where participants of scientific competitions are invited to blog, uh, to blog about their activities for the 2020 STEM discovery campaign here. Okay, so the uh, description of the activity, in fact, we have uh, designed a STEM activity uh, whose slogan together to have a better internet uh, using the microcontroller microbit. In fact, we coded a robot with three sensors of line lower and one sensor for obstacle detector. The relationship between our activity with the SEFA Internet Day uh, is that the obstacles uh, are chosen according to the slogan. In fact, when the robot detects uh, that there is a virus or a hacker uh, or uh, a spying, so it stops with making a sound. Okay. Uh, the activity schedule uh, of uh, uh, the activity schedule uh, is uh, that we prepare the maquette with the different uh, objects. Uh, in fact, uh, I divided my class into three groups. The first group of students uh, works on uh, designing the obstacles. 
related to, to the TEPA Internet Day. The second group work. Uh, uh, the second group works on creating the obstacles and the, the market, the line follower, and the third group works on coding the robot. And these are uh, some uh, videos. The first, uh, the uh, the previous uh, slide and uh, the this slide contains contain uh, two videos. Yes. So you can click on this uh, video and you will uh, it will be opened in a new tab. Coding uh, using microbits. So uh, my students write uh, different needed blocks and functions using the microbit uh, simulator. And uh, as a dissemination uh, to our activity by celebrating the Safer Internet Day 2020 through a video conference with educators from different regions in Tunisia under the leadership of the Etwini ESI. Uh, of my country. In fact, teachers and their students present, presented their activities which demonstrated their responsible use of the Internet and awareness of Internet dangers. Uh, when we designed this activity, we indicated that coding is a basic literacy in the digital age and it's important for kids to understand and uh, be able to work with. Having children learn coding at the age, at the young age prepares them for, for the future and coding helps children with communication, creativity, as well as math, writing and confidence without forgetting the importance of practicing good etiquette. In fact, we always want to come across as a professional, uh, especially when uh, communicating online. And these, this, is, uh, this slide contains also uh, a video uh, in which my students, uh, in uh, uh, my students, in the presence of uh, my school director, uh, present our uh, present our activity uh, we, uh, as a video conference with Etwini Pesa. And this is the link of uh, the blog of uh, the uh, our activity in. Uh, 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 in our activity uh, existing in the blog of Scientix, uh, of the, of the, Scientix, the 2020 STEM discovery campaign. I will share you this, uh, the link in the chat box. This is the link. Okay, and thank you so much for your attention, uh, and thank you for uh, this opportunity, Annette. Thank you so much. Thanks to you, Iman. It was a very nice uh, presentation. Also, you touched upon very important topics. So, then etiquette is something that um, a few times maybe we don't uh, think about that much. So, it's, uh, it's very good. Thank you so much. And if you have any question for Iman, you can... Uh, Type them in the chat. I'm gathering them, and then at the very end of the presentation, we will ask uh, Iman or Leticia or whoever you want to to ask uh, your questions. Okay, uh, so we're gonna go now to the next uh, presenter. Uh, Elka, you here? You around? You ready to present your very nice presentation? Mm, did they share some of that? No. Uh, now I think it's coming. Okay, I can see you now. Hello, and. Hello. The presentation is there. So whenever you want, the floor is yours. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, hello. So um, I come from Bulgaria, uh, actually, but I'm a second teacher uh, for the European School of Brussels III uh, by the Bulgarian Ministry of Education to teach mathematics in uh, the English section of the school. Uh, maybe a couple of words. Uh, about uh, the European School Brussels III. This is one of the 13 uh, schools, European schools uh, in Europe, and uh, the fourth, one of the four schools in uh, Brussels. Uh, it combines uh, nursery, primary, secondary education with approximately 3,200 students uh, spread in uh, seven uh, language sections. Uh, and. Um, Actually, I uh, teach mathematics in the English section. Uh, also, I teach English as a foreign language. I have students from uh, all uh, the other sections and information uh, and uh, communication technology. 
So um, the title of my uh, presentation, oh, uh, sorry, the title of my presentation is "Let's Code and Play in um, Scratch." And um, actually, after students master the skills in coding, their own questions and answers game. Uh, they can apply these uh, skills in creating similar games in all school subjects. Also, the activity can be used uh, by uh, uh, different teachers teaching different subjects as uh, revision lessons. Um, yes, as I said, it's uh, very suitable for revision lessons and also developing students' uh, creativity and evaluating the level of consolidation. Um, in addition, it's great fun. Students continue creating their games on enjoyable topics and uh, involve uh, their friends and um, family members. Um, so, uh, to create the game, you should go to uh, the Scratch uh, website, you see, and click on Create. Students are given a worksheet with very detailed instructions and an example how to broadcast and receive a message, as well as uh, which blocks to use as a response when uh, the answer of the question is correct or wrong. Um, the teacher has made so that me, uh, here you can find my own game, questions and answers, where in the world am I, uh, based on uh, different uh, uh, cities around the world and um, all the pictures uh, all the pictures which I used for the cities are from my uh, own album. And this is what students should know, that if they use any pictures uh, for background, for backdrop, uh, they should give credits in uh, the notice uh, box. Uh, so some uh, disadvantages, uh, the longer the game is, uh, the, more, uh, the more boring the coding uh, could be, as there are a lot of repetitive parts. Uh, however, students love it, especially when they see their final version and make their friends or family members play, uh, play the game. Uh, so here is uh, the front page of uh, my game uh, with uh, the instructions and notes and credits. This is what uh, I explained to students that uh, all the backdrops, all the backgrounds they use, uh, if these are not pictures um, from uh, their own albums, they should give credit and uh, recognition and the links uh, where they took the pictures from. And, uh, while you are just having a look at a uh, small part of uh, the coding inside, um, I would like to mention that um, actually the real work starts from now on. Because when students finish with their game, uh, they submit it for evaluation, for feedback. They copy and paste uh, that link in uh, Dr. Scratch website. I will just uh, put it here in uh, uh, the chat box. And uh, they get uh, a report, uh, feedback, with not only the points, um, the score, but also with recommendations. And uh, by the way, uh, what I made, um, if you put it in uh, Dr. Scratch, it will be 11 out of 21. But I made it on purpose, because um, I wanted students uh, to make their modifications, to be creative. And uh, for example, um, if uh, an answer can be accepted as, uh, let's say, who is the inventor of the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell, also Alexander Bell or Bell. So it's, um, uh, they should think how to, uh, to accept the three answers and uh, how to modify, uh, how to improve their work. Uh, there are seven criteria, by the way. Uh, flow control, data representation, abstraction, user interactivity, synchronization, parallelism, and logic. Uh, so this version has three out of three in uh, uh, synchronization. And, uh, well, two out of three for data representation, user uh, interactivity two out of three. It's not possible to be three out of three because uh, there is no web camera, no videos. Um, and it's not necessary to have uh, the maximum score. But actually, this, uh, this was my purpose, to make students do their modification and be creative and, uh, uh, well, just use their imagination and also learn uh, by doing. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you for... Uh, <laughs> 
attention and happy coding. Thank you so much. It has been very interesting, very nice. I share also the link in the of your game in the chat so that can, teachers can access to it, and then you also share your link. So perfect. Uh, so if you have any question for Elka or the other participants, you can type them in the chat, and then at the end, at the very end, we will come back to you. Okay? Thank you, Elka. And uh, Fatma, you're next. Are you ready? Fatma, okay. I can uh, see your camera, and you're good. Good luck. You can start. Fatma Boaziz, computer science teacher. Yes, I am Fatma Boaziz, computer science teacher in Ali Nuri Prep School from Tunisia. Uh, my student age is between 13 and 15. Uh, I will present you in my presentation uh, Coding with Minecraft Education. So, what is Minecraft Education Edition? Minecraft Education Edition is an open world game that promotes creativity, collaboration, and problem solving in an immersive environment where the only limit is your imagination. Minecraft Education Edition helps prepare students for the future workplace, building skills like collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and system thinking. The open learning environment gives students the freedom to experiment, encouraging creative self-expression and problem solving. How uh, to learn uh, to code in Minecraft? Code Builder is a feature that allows students to learn coding in Minecraft using tools including Code.org, Tinker, Scratch, and Microsoft Make Code, code or JavaScript or Python to both build and create in Minecraft. Minecraft Hour of Code also offers a free one-hour introduction to coding basics. I will show you two examples of coding in Minecraft education. The first example is agent moves. In this example, the student must code the agent so that he moves through the labyrinth of the student can code the movement of the agent forward, left, or right. Uh, but this uh, video doesn't work, Nair. Uh, here I put it. Uh, yeah, if it doesn't work. Yes. Yes, but if it doesn't work, Fatma. So you just we just uh, share the presentation later with the links uh, so that they can see it. Okay. Okay. I put it uh, there, uh, the execution of the agent, uh, it moves uh, in the labyrinth, like this photo. Uh, so the second uh, example uh, is agent ball. Uh, so uh, in this example, the agent will build a square with the code builder. Uh, so the student can learn conditional structures and uh, repetitive loops in a 3D execution environment with a, a lot of motivation. Also, the student uh, can build uh, buildings in, my, uh, in Minecraft with coding, and this construction in Minecraft become easier and faster. So, uh, in the uh, current time period, uh, I use the Microsoft Teams with my students to, to continue co coding sessions with Minecraft. And uh, always, I encourage my students to create games via Minecraft education. And each session, I give them a challenge uh, to, do, to do it for really uh, Minecraft education, motivates them to learn blocks, uh, coding, and other languages in uh, computer science. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much, Fatma. The connection was uh, dropping a bit, but I will also share in the chat a link to Minecraft. And then for the videos, we will share the presentation so that they can access the videos later. Okay? Good. Okay. Thank you. And uh, if you have any questions for Fatma, 
thanks to you for presenting. And if you have any question for Fatma or the others, otherwise we're gonna move on to Jana now. Jana, uh, she's coming from Ukraine. Jana, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Hello, good luck. Uh, Everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jana. I am English German teacher from Ukraine and uh, an Atvinian uh, ambassador as well. My students are between 10 and 17 years old, and uh, they are very active winners of my school. So, <clears throat> I'd like to present you uh, our Itwinian project. Uh, this project is called Treasure Box of Human Dignity and uh, it celebrates taking care of the students in European schools. Uh, the national lingual emotional cultural diversity is the common heritage of human and uh, we would like to discover it with our students. The project Treasure Box of Human Dignity is an opportunity to help our students understand the value of their diversity and learn how to live together in harmony and take care of each other at the same time. As the project is going to be in English, students will get better knowledge of English language through simple coding activities. Uh, moreover, they will learn new ICT tools and will be able to use them very carefully and with pleasure. Uh, this, project, um, this project partners were participants of European Code Week event in October 2019 and were certi certified as well. So, the students... Uh, presented human dignity in our real life using, uh, di using different eye tools very creatively. Uh, more than 20 tools were used to focus the students doing all the activity due to the plan. For example, brainstorming, mind maps, creating messages, uh, quizzes, polls, evaluations and publications. Uh, some of them were used in in unusual way. For example, Google Map uh, was a main tool for international quest, a final project uh, uh, product. Uh, the students uh, worked in peers, uh, small groups, to create an algorithm to present their subject realizing and develop problem solving creating and uh, creative and critical thinking and soft skills, promote positive behavior. Students try to become familiar with the special vocabulary. Uh, they prepare the, their coding letters for future generations after doing some pre-activities, collecting the letters. They will discard the useless definitions and order all the materials to create their letters for treasure box. Uh, during code week, the students from different countries did coding activities with great pleasure. They were excited with a new way to do project activities, and it was uh, simple and funny uh, and helped them re uh, realize the main aspects of the world combination human dignity. Uh, though the project wasn't dedicated to, to some digital items, they were the helping hands during every activity and uh, all the students, all the participants uh, did all these activities with great pleasure and were delighted and excited doing it. And um, uh, of course, um, uh, you have um, uh, they, they have um, certified have been certified in uh, for this event, and uh, uh, it was. Uh, a great, it was a great event uh, this coding, to have this coding activity because um, uh, they hadn't uh, uh, done uh, such an activity before. So, if you have questions for me, 
You are welcome to ask. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Anna. It's been very interesting. I like the topic very much. Uh, I know five minutes is not that much, so we will share the presentation with the audience, and then if they have uh, any other questions or any further comments on how to do this with their kids or with their children, I'm sure they, they can contact you. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dana, for your presentation. And we go now to Julio. Julio Pigas in Portugal, Praga. Julio, bienvenido. Yes. Hello. Uh, good, good luck. The floor is yours. Thank you. So, uh, hello to everybody. Uh, I'm a teacher at the Grupo Miento de Escolas Dona Maria Suna in Portugal. First, I was to say that coding is for all ages. Uh, I start my presentation with uh, my own selection of kids. I think that was my first problem when I started doing projects. So, how to start it? Of course, you can start without technology, say with paper, scissors and glue. Uh, and is important. But nowadays technology increases student engagement. So uh, I used to introduce that six, seven years Clementoni, like doc and mind designer, and kids love it. Next I used to Microbit, Raspberry Pi, and Arduino. Uh, some time ago uh, I was in a conference about nanotechnology, and a scientist said, that bits, genes, and molecules are linked to make things like new materials, sensors, and nanomachines. So, to work in the field, teams must be multidisciplinary. Another thing is, uh, I, I, I thought is interesting, is that gold, you know, the yellow metal, change color to red at nanoscale. So, we must understand uh, the scale you are working. Uh, what is big and what is small, I think, is first step. Uh, small at the atomic level, big at the intergalactic scale. And then make connections between the real and the virtual worlds. Students learn better if they can see these relations. So virtual reality is growing, and our augmented reality can be interesting, say, the mix between the two worlds. Uh, another thing, do you see something strange in this picture near the Velociraptor, the dinosaur? So when I was a teenager, I liked to play Tetris. Uh, you know the game. The goal is to continually stack blocks and clear lines as long as possible. When a line is filled, appear and gives more space to stack. Perhaps you are waiting for the right piece and the piece never appears. What about a new piece that you never see before? That is the feeling when you develop a project. You face things that are not written and no textbook to guide and you must live with it. Be sure you have already faced a game changer. I think now is a time. So our club, we, we, uh, we work with Club Ciencia Viva, uh, promotes activities to students, and is a lab where students make their own projects to present at the national and international fairs. Uh, it complements the curriculum. The club uh, has borrowed some equipment uh, in our days to realize uh, projects, and the lab is always open for students' work. Any member can access to the key and is the student responsibility the maintenance of the equipment, like a social classroom. And for us, I think uh, you must uh, you can organize a festival like a scientific fair where students present their work. We can join forces with another uh, projects. Uh, like Erasmus Plus, scientists, science fairs, universities and research institutions, companies, and of course, uh, the National Agency for Scientific, Culture and Technology. So, I think is what I mean. Uh, I hope you like my presentation. 
uh, it's short, but it tells what I think now. Feel free to contact me if you want to work together. Thank you, Nair. Thank you, Julio. Obrigada. And I'm sure many teachers may contact you, may get in touch uh, if they want to, to do something together. So lots of uh, interesting. In nice ideas, and we're moving on quickly to uh, Satsu. Satsu is joining from uh, Turkey, Ankara, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Satsu, are you there? I'm from Ankara, capital of Turkey. Uh, I'm a computer science teacher. Today, uh, I will give a presentation about my More Coding, More Girls project, which was awarded by STEM Alliance at Diversity in STEM competition last year. Uh, the project motto is close the gender gap in technology by teaching girls to code. You might be wondering why I started this project. Here are some of the reasons. According to research, the number of women as a worker or manager in the field of ICT is very low. And according, according to policy documents, the countries declare that they need more women IT specialists. The aim of the project was to develop coding skills for girls and raise awareness on coding. And the target group of this project is composed of 20 female students. School industry collaboration is very important for vocational education. Because of this, we cooperate with some organizations in order to conduct this project. And as you see, Microsoft Global Partner IDE, Science on State Europe, and SAP were our supporters. Our main supporter was Science on State Europe, and this project was granted by them. We choose Microbits because it has a low-cost solution. It has become popular. And we can use and code it easily because of its integrated sensors. I trained students Microbit for three days, and we use Microsoft MakeCode. After training, it was time to run their projects. In the meantime, I and my colleagues prepared the exhibition area. Uh, here is a video, but uh, I think it doesn't work. Because of that, I will send the link uh, through chat. Uh, after my presentation. Uh, the exhibition was visited by several students and teachers, and my students gave information about their projects. Uh, after the exhibition, a Microsoft trainer from ID, which was our supporter, gave a presentation about importance of coding to 200 students at a conference hall, and the program was concluded with certificate ceremony. And we reached some important outcomes. Uh, students' coding awareness and skills rise impressively. Their presentation skills will improve, were improved. The numbers of students who selected IT department increased. Their academic achievements dramatically improved. And they gained confidence and kept on coding. More Coding, More Girls project was one of the winners of Diversity in STEM competition, which was organized by STEM Alliance. And this award drew attention of Turkish national TV channels. They made interviews with me and my students about the process. Because of the target groups, which was girls, I was invited to live discussion about that on a famous women-oriented TV programs. I was invited to micro live event which was held in Manchester to explain this project. And finally, I gave a presentation in London, that conference teach me. Thank you for your attention. I'm open to your questions. Thanks to you, Satu. It was very interesting. I really love the topic. Uh, it's true that we, well, in general, we face this uh, shortage of, of of prepare students uh, in ICT, but uh, also especially girls. So it's uh, it's very interesting, and thank you for bringing this up. Uh, if you have 
if you have any question for uh, Satchu, uh, feel free to type them in the chat. Uh, we will ask them uh, at the very end. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to move on to the next speaker. His name is Francisco. Francisco, you there? You ready to go? You ready to rock and roll? Hello, Nair. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. And uh, if you want to switch on your camera so we can see you. And voila, the slides are there. And you just need to move them with the arrow here on the bottom of the page. Well, hello, Nair and people from Code Week community. Uh, my name is Francisco Javier Macero. I am leading teacher and currently working as ICT advisor in CPR Safra in Spain. I want to show you a Golden Egg project, a group of activities to show the possibilities of integrating technology in educational projects. We chose the Golden Century as the theme to develop this project because it was one of the most important times in the history of our city and of Spain too. In addition, we focus on working on key competencies and to show us the different techno technological activities that can be carried out in our new future classroom lab, which we have uh, built uh, this year in our organization using the Brussels model. This project consists of seven activities that uses uh, technology as a tool to teach historical concepts. The students can play video games to learn about this time, learn to program, use 3D printed uh, materials, record video, or interact, to interact with virtual reality using their uh, smartphones. Now I'm going to show you the different activities of Golden Age uh, project. In the first, uh, students received a 3D figure or an image of some relevant people of the age, a writer, a musician, an, an aristocrat. They had to identify and show their names using microbit. In the second activity, the students used a video game ca called Kingdom Come Deliverance, set in the Middle Ages, to do some missions that your father in the video game asked uh, to you. Buy from the market, uh, look for materials to make a sword, practice shooting with bow, or fight with shields and a sword, for example. Another interesting activity was creating a stop motion. Uh, the students had different Playmobil toys, a castle, knights, horses, and they had to create a movie with this technique. To do this, uh, uh, to, to do this, uh, they used smartphones and an application called Life Labs that is totally free and allows you to record easily. In the following activity, or when uh, one of the most interesting activities because it introduced uh, programming concepts was to use the robot to get to the Duke's castle. Uh, using an app uh, with their uh, smartphones, they had uh, to guide the robots through a route to reach their goal. We used two similar tools for, for them to work in groups, to collaborate and finish before the opposing team. In the following activity, and dress in costumes for, from the, the Golden Age, they used a chroma to record a video with a tablet as if they were characters of the time, a king, a woman of the nobility, a knight. In the sixth activity, they used their smartphones to visit virtually places of the time, castles, abbeys, churches. They used uh, applications such as Beard Time Place or Google Expeditions using Google Cardboard. And finally, they did an unplugged activity which consists of uh, writing their names on a glass wall using the writing of the time. If you are interested in this project, you can see the video presentation and access the resources created in the links that appear on this slide. 
Scholarium, Crea Project website, or download the source file to be used uh, to be used with Excel Learning Program. I hope this project helps you to integrate technology in your places. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Uh this it was very nice, very inspiring. I'm sure there are a lot of uh, nice comments in the chat as well. I share the links uh, of the project in the chat, and they will also be able to access them from the presentation. So uh, stay around in case there are some questions for you. And uh, thank you so much for your presentation, Francisco. And uh, Stefania, you, ciao. We have uh, our first uh, speaker, Ciao. last but not least, right? Uh, Stefania Altieri from Italy. Uh, whenever you want, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Nay. Uh, my name is Stefania Altieri. I am a Scientix Ambassador and uh, it winning Group Moderator of uh, Coding X Schools. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we have experienced a very difficult time in our lives. Teachers suddenly found themselves having to use technology to reach their students at home. Because all, all schools were closed. So we had to begin a distance teaching and learning and help students from far away. How to go on with coding through PC and devices. I started from there to think a way to motivate them, to make this emergency less heavy for them, and create games and play online with coding with a computer or a smartphone. One of these games is based on a famous game called Guess Who. You have to solve all the quizzes to discover the hidden image and find out the character under the sheets. One by one, the sheets will be taken away, if you give the right answer, of course. Revealing the photo. The quizzes are all based on coding. You can find uh, Cody Robbie cards, uh, Scratch, uh, Cody Fit, Cody Color, uh, ICT History. Uh, I simply chose a format from Genially, a template to modify, so it's very easy to create. This game was also proposed in our eight-winning project, Coding to Save the Planet, as a task for all the partners, so some students from all over Europe could play this game and enjoy it. Playing is very easy, and also creating a game is very easy. Very simple, you just find your templates in Genially. Before finishing my presentation, just a few words before leaving you. I'd like to encourage you to keep going and coding with passion and enthusiasm. We will all do our part and contribute with a positive attitude. Be strong, we are doing well and everything will be fine. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Stefania. I promise I will give you two minutes to show the game. So if you want to show it, I will just yeah. show the next uh, slide first because then it will go away. So very quick reminder of the deadline to finish the course. If you are feeling, uh, if you are completing the icebreaker MOOC, I'm going to share the link in the chat again. Uh, please remember that 15th of June is the deadline to complete the quiz. So do not miss the deadline because if you miss it, unfortunately, we will not be able to give you the certificates, okay? And remind you that the certificate is also validated by European Schoolnet and also the University of Urbino. So, Stefania, go ahead, show the game. Yeah. Can you, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Can I go on? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So I was uh, just uh, showing a few slides so you can understand. Uh, solve the quizzes and guess the mysterious character under the sheets. So following the instruction, which robots reach the gray square? So the instructions are forward, forward, right, and forward. If you uh, press the wrong one, you will have this cross. But if you uh, uh, correctly answer, you go ahead and you can see the, the sheets going away. So which letter will uh, Cody Robbie reach 
following the cards. So the cards are forward, forward, right, forward. Forward, forward, right, forward. So C is the right answer. And so on, you can find all the quizzes to complete this game. Uh, this is the last one. What does coding mean? To count, to program, to deliver. Of course, to program. So this is very easy to play and also very easy to create because you can find your templates from here, from Genially, genial.org. Ly, and you can just modify the template that you can find here. Just follow the uh, game, gamification is called the section where you can find, you, you just go to create generally, you go to gamification or learning experience and you can find for free many, many tools to just to complete, this is mine with the image. You go ahead and you can just modify what is in. Very easy. Okay, thank you, Nayib, for these extra minutes. Thank you very much. Thanks to you for sharing. Indeed, it's very nice to see it. So I thought that it would be worth it. Okay, thank you, Stefania, so much. Uh, so now we go, we have, uh, we are running out of time, but quickly, if you have any question for any of the speakers, please uh, type them in the chat. In the meantime, I'll see, I just wanted to share the last, uh, it will take a while to upload, but anyway, if not, it's, it's not a problem. Okay, it's there. Uh, in the meantime, I have a couple of questions. So I have one question that may be asked for um, to everybody, actually, but I want to address a question uh, especially to Elka and Leticia, uh, both of you, because uh, Elka is working with the Scratch and Leticia with uh, the Bbots. So my question for both of you, you can uh, switch on the screen if you want. Uh, the question for both of you is that what would you say to a teacher who maybe uh, they have been considering using the B-Bots maybe or Scratch in the classroom, but they they have not done it because they are a bit, uh, let's say, scared, they they are afraid of, of using it. What do you say? What would you say to them? And you can do, uh, you can take turns. Well, I would show, I would show that uh, it's not that uh, scary <laughs> and not that hard. Uh, the same as my colleagues uh, uh, taught me how to um, to teach robotics, uh, EV3 Mindstorm. So uh, the same way I would uh, help uh, my colleagues. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Okay. Uh, I would say don't be scared for that because even with young, really young children, you can do amazing activities that can improve their learning in a motivated way, so it's really easy. Probably at the beginning uh, you can feel a bit scared, but uh, if you have the support of the families and even if you have some co-worker who work with, it would be good for you. And don't be scared because there are many resources in the Code Week website and, uh, and it's really easy, so go ahead with this. <laughs> And, and uh, where to start, uh, Leticia or Elka, any of you, where to start from? If uh, you're a beginner teacher and you have never tried before, how, how they can start? Uh, there are a lot of tutorials. And so you start with the simplest uh, motion blocks, just showing the sprite uh, by default, the cat to move 10 steps to the right, 10 steps to the left uh, with plus, minus, and uh, the same we do with the students. So that's the, these are the very, very simple steps. And there are a lot of tutorials. Okay. I myself, I learn a lot through tutorials. Just pause, <laughs> stop with the pause, and do the same, and then uh, continue. And trial and error, right? It's always uh, yes. try, and make a mistake, try again, make a mistake again. Okay, thank you. And Leticia, if you can just stay in, there was one question for you at the very beginning. And uh, it was coming from Edgar, I think. And uh, they were asking how many students you have in your class. Okay, now currently uh, we have, or well, my current class consists of uh, 20 students 
and it was easy to walk to us all times at the beginning to give instructions it was better to walk in a small group while the rest were in corners because in kindergarten period we walked in corners but at the end uh, we we walk uh, all together so now we are 20 but it's not an inconvenient Okay, great. So I was just, uh, thank you so much, uh, Leticia. I was checking in the chat if uh, there is any any other question for either you or any of the other um, speakers. So please, if you have any question, type them in the chat. If not, uh, we will finish soon. And... Uh, Okay, I'll wait a minute and see if uh, if okay. I don't see any any question here around. So just a very quick um, reminder again of the deadline of the course. So fifteenth of June deadline to uh, finish the quiz and get this super nice certificate and again stay tuned to social media channels we have the Facebook group for teachers I don't know if uh, well, I think Petina is here if you can share it Petina in the in the chat otherwise we will also share it in the course uh, Twitter as well uh, called we website for schools which has uh, many many resources for teachers like you who are willing to bring innovation somehow to the classroom but maybe you you don't know where to start from and uh, I think that's it. I uh, thank you very much, uh, all of you, for joining uh, today, this afternoon. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening.